All right, back with Washington Unplugged, and I'm with Jeff Zeleny, who kind of made his way into the history books last night uh, with his question uh, to Barack Obama. Let's just listen to a little bit of the question. Thank you, Mr. President. Mm -hmm. During these first 100 days, what has surprised you the most about this office, enchanted you the most about serving in this office, humbled you the most, and troubled you the most? Now, let me write this down. <laughs> Surprised. Right, I've got, uh, troubled. I've got, uh, what, what was the first one? Surprised. Surprised. Troubled. Troubled. Enchanted. Enchanted. Nice. And humbled. And what was the last one? Humbled? Uh, humbled. Thank you, sir. All right. Jeff, I must say it was a great question, but I must also say he hit it out of the ballpark. Not only out of the ballpark, but over the fence and over the house behind the fence. It's one of the reasons I asked it. If uh, anyone who's ever interviewed him, as you know, He's a thoughtful guy. He's, uh, he's reflective. He likes to reflect. He likes to um, sort of think in real time as he's going. Mm -hmm. So had this been at the very beginning of the news conference, mm -hmm. had I worked for the Associated Press um, or one of the networks at the beginning, of course I wouldn't have asked it. Mm -hmm. But this was question, I think, seven or eight out of 13, mm -hmm. almost the seventh inning stretch, if you will. So I thought, why not to let him stretch a little bit? And he did. Um, I was with him earlier in the day at the town meeting in Missouri. Mm -hmm. and. He gave really long answers to these questions, but really toward the end of these answers, he's, he starts to sort of um, sharpen his point and get a little bit better. It's one of the reasons he wasn't that great in the debates mm -hmm. early on, because he, it takes the wind-up a, a while. But I thought his answer uh, to all four questions um, really told the American people a bit about him. I, I must say, I'm beginning to think that this may be the best guy at a news conference of any president uh, since Jack Kennedy, who I think still holds the title as being able to handle the questions and, and have a news conference come out the way he wants it to and yet not sound like you're just reciting memorized talking points. It's always fun to watch somebody, I mean, put politics aside, ideology aside, but watch somebody who's really good at something. He's really good at this. He's good at the sport of give and take. He really, I think, would have, it would have been interesting to see him sort of before this 24-hour news cycle, mm -hmm. to see him sort of at the back of the bus, if you will, and bantering and going um, in long-form questions and, and things, because he, he's really good. He enjoys those kind of conversations. I remember walking with him in the Senate uh, right when he arrived in 2005. I spent a lot of time with him that first year, and the best you would get from him is on those long walks from the the Capitol right off the Senate floor. His office was in Hart 713. Mm -hmm. It's about as far as you. It's about as far away as you can go. About a 12-minute walk, and those were always the best interview times. I think one thing we learned last night. Um, there was a bit of news in it. We got a, a bit of his perspective of how he thinks Washington works, and he was almost sounding a little bit like George W. Bush, perhaps a little more polished in saying it. But I recall President Bush at one point saying something about it would be nice or it might be interesting to see how it would be to be a dictator. Well, President Obama last night said, look, I don't control all the levers of power. I don't have my finger on the button. So I thought it was interesting how focused on him the answers were. He didn't talk about Michelle or the girls, when, uh, which I was hoping for that in the enchanted part of the question. I was hoping he might give mm -hmm. a little bit of sense of what it was like to walk into the White House for the first time. Um, but it was interesting. Now, second hundred days, how long does, because he's clearly in kind of a honeymoon now. Uh, and I mean, the, the uh, honeymoon in recent days is, seems to have gotten a little better than it was in the very beginning. Even. How long does this go on? I mean, there's got to be some tough times, some rough waters ahead. Yeah. When do you see that coming? Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Next week. I think, I think they're well aware of the fact that this is all fleeting. Who knows what the outcome of this uh, flu outbreak will be. We don't exactly know where that's going to go. Um, he still has a lot of decisions to make on the, on the automotive side, not to mention every other um, private entity that the government has its hands in um, now. But he needs some legislative accomplishments again. The stimulus bill is a huge one, but something at some point has to happen with health care. We're nearing May, and then it will be June, and then the summer recess comes. So the second 100 days, will be focused on a lot of Capitol Hill activity. He has the numbers. Now he just needs to sort of corral people on the policy. And uh, you know everyone is not singing from the same page on those things. So the second 100 days, hard to believe, may be more difficult than the first. Jeff Zeleny.
Thank you very much. Thank uh, you, Bob. Enjoyed seeing you on the uh, news conference last night. You're watching Washington Unplugged. Don't forget, Sunday on Face the Nation, we'll be talking about the flu outbreak. We'll also be talking to Arlen Specter. We'll see you then.